Welcome to the podcast that's dedicated to helping business owners to prepare for exit so you can maximize value and exit on your own terms. This is the Exit Insights podcast presented by Succession Plus. I'm Daryl Bates Brownsword, and today I'm talking to Jamie Brownlee from Green Target. Green Target is a specialist PR firm, and I thought, look, we, we haven't spoken about PR and preparing your business and, and presenting your business you know, commercially and, and on the front foot uh, when you're getting ready for exit. So it, it was something I hadn't thought about before, and so I approached Jamie and, and we had a conversation to prepare. So, hey, welcome, Jamie. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me on, Daryl. That's great. So, Jamie... Give us a little bit about your background, because when we spoke, you told me that you're already doing a lot of work in helping business owners prepare their, their business uh, from a communication and presentation perspective well in advance of, of them thinking about exit, but with an exit in mind. How, how, how does a PR, PR go fall into that? Yeah, I mean, I think. Look, I think I've I've been I've uh, been doing this now for 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 now on fourteen years, um, and I've seen both sides. So I've seen from the private capital side, uh, and I've seen it from the portfolio and the individual companies that are are looking to exit or looking to be acquired. So I can see both sides of it. I think, you know, from a from a, a communications perspective, we are we find it imperative that from the the beginning of the relationship with the, with the client that we know their goals. So what are their plans? Because if we know that, you know, they most of them will have sort of a five year plan in terms of what they're what they're looking for, where where they think the business will be. Are they looking what kind of exit are they looking for? What kind of um, potentially acquisition are you looking for from a PE perspective? What, what what kind of firms are they looking at? Uh, what kind of areas they think are going to grow um, particularly well over in the next five years? So we get we, we, we implement that as part of any strategy now. We see, or well, I see it as being incredibly important that firms that that have the ambition to to be bought have a or or raise their credibility bar so that they are seen um, in in positive light. Um, that they have a good, they have good quality uh, PR. They have good uh, high end tier one coverage of the brand, so that people will associate a level of credibility with them, which I think does help negotiations it does help elevate the brand into a into conversations that maybe that another brand isn't doesn't have that visibility um uh you know doesn't have that level of vis- visibility so i think it's really really important i think a lot of firms don't necessarily sort of keep it high up on the agenda when actually i think it should be um because in this day and age credibility is everything absolutely and and let's get it st- Straight off the bat, I think one of the the big questions that business owners will be thinking if if they're hearing about PR in advance of exit, you know, that the fear may be there that, oh, my God, is is, is he suggesting that we should be promoting and communicating to the world that we're that we're actually thinking about exiting or is he thinking about, hey, because that would terrify my my staff or is he saying, hey, look, it's just part of your overall brand building strategy and if you just create general awareness of your business out there and raise the profile of your business then more people will be aware of your business including acquirers and and just that exposure and that reputation build and and awareness of your business is going to be attractive to any acquirer yeah and i think that's a really good point i think there are two different strands i think you've got some businesses that will want to be very transparent and very explicit about their plans they may be a smaller business that will have, uh, a, you know, f- some of the uh, the individual members of the firm or the, the the employees will have a potential stake that the the the, the future of that firm will have a uh, an important will will, make, will be an important part of them in five years. So actually communicating that is the plan. I think it acts as an incredible um, motivational tool. But you're right. There are firms who perhaps don't want that communicated. They want to keep their business objectives close to their chest. Um, that doesn't. I don't believe that actually has any impact on on a PR strategy because the PR strategy should inherently try to raise the profile of the brand, um, so that so that as you mentioned earlier, so that firms do know this, do do know the brand, do know what it stands for, and understand the type of messaging, understand what their what their sort of raison d'etre is, and I think that's very very important. So we we deal with 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 both both sides. We have firms who are very coy about their plans. They wouldn't we, they would mention it to us, but perhaps wouldn't want that mentioned uh, with media or or uh, externally. But that still helps us position them correctly with media. It it helps us to determine the type of opportunities that we should be sourcing, and it 
it helps us determine the type of readers that we should be targeting um, it, it, over over the sort of the short and and, and long term. But I think for those firms that are potentially more willing to be explicit about their plans that from a media perspective is is very very strong because the media can then really start to hone in on the type of angle that they're looking for in their in their article uh they can have a real feel of the firm and i think one thing that journalists absolutely love is as as, as i'm sure everyone will uh, understand is they like a firm that they feel are being completely open with them that they can really relate with them that there is a there are people behind the brand so there's always that that tightrope of how corporate how human do i want to be and it's a very it's an interesting um it's an interesting uh change in the way that, that some some firms need to approach okay so <clears throat> yeah one of the things that we understand is is that brand is is one of the most valuable intangible assets that a business has and the question I've got that, that I'd love to tap into your expertise and knowledge is, is at what point does a business start building, let's call it brand value? What, what, at what point does that brand actually become a, an intangible asset for the business? And at what point is it just a cute logo? Um, you know, a lot of yeah. SME businesses, you yeah. know, they, they, they'll, they'll get some design done and they'll create a brand <laughs> for the business but they Absolutely. don't have brand value yet. The, the owners, the people in the business love the brand, and, 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 and some people might not like me saying this, but at some point we, we, we move to the point where the brand gets recognized in the marketplace and people start coming to the business, they come to the brand because they know the brand of the business and the product associated with that brand beyond the people. Have you got any feel, Jamie, for, for what sort of size a business it is? I, I guess it's different in different industries, but you get that inflection point, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, and it's, it's a really good point. And I think, ironically, the PR or I guess the wider marketing sector often has its own poor PR problem. Um, it, it does have, there are some, uh, there are some strategies, there are some firms, there are some people out there that perhaps, you know, they, they probably negatively portray the industry as quite fluffy maybe hard to quantify um intangible as you mentioned um or the results should i say are intangible <laughs> so it, it it can be difficult as you say and we do sometimes uh feel that 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 pushback um but i think from a from a credibility side and and i think size or appearance of the firm and we see this a lot because we will be working with a range of different size firms and one thing I would say about the media that they are the one massive positive about the media and, and journalists in particular, they don't often necessarily always go to the big boys to, 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 for comment, for insight, for thought leadership. They're very, very willing to listen to a range of different sizes. And that's definitely something uh, that's definitely something that they have been tasked with individual journalists, making sure that they are getting comments and they're sourcing data and information from as diverse a, uh, a pool as possible. So that gives everybody quite a, a, it's a much more even ground um and when i'm talking about media i'm talking about the i'm talking about the big hitting the sunday times the the, the times the telegraph the ft so do, you name the, the big publications the big the big um uh, bushes that have have you know are still um you know accessible via via newspapers um and i think i think that so that that gives everyone a, a really great chance so this idea of of how a firm can a, can appear so if it, it comes to the negotiation table it comes to the point of exit Yes, the numbers, and yes, you'll get all, a lot of the information from your PL. But actually, as you say, that intangible, that feeling of how big this firm is and what it stands for, that has been carefully crafted, or that can be carefully crafted through effective communications and PR over time. So that regardless of what your what what the numbers might say, you might have a feeling of what that firm. And I think that that we perhaps don't give that enough enough attention of of what that value can be, and that actually can provide a quite a bit of a buffer and an extra premium on top of a potential price. So I think that's something that people perhaps don't really recognize, but it's definitely there. It's definitely there. Yeah. So that's the perception, if I'm understanding correctly. Um, you know, I like to really simplify things down. So sure. so that's, if I'm understanding, uh, Jamie, is the you know, a business that's punching above its weight. It, it appears to, to be much bigger than it really is through exposure and and general awareness of its brand name. And that, that translates to, to real valuation when the business exits because of perceived um, value and size, even though the, the, the financials may not portray that. 
So we can do that deliberately. So the next thing that comes to mind is I imagine that there's a lot of business owners listening to this podcast and they're going, I've never engaged someone from PR before. Like we're just too small or it's, we've never had to, we've had other marketing channels. Isn't, isn't PR old school, you know, you know, getting in the media is, is almost irrelevant nowadays because we've all got our own media channel. We we're all, we're all, you know, on social media, for example, and we can do that. So can you give us some examples of, of, what the sort of things you would actually do and achieve for an, a, an organization in by by engaging and working with someone to consciously develop their PR strategy. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned social media, which I think I was going to I'll jump in first on because social media for most the lot well, the large majority of firms cannot be done without effective PR. Uh, and what I mean by that is the, the, the coverage that you're generating through your PR proposal or your sorry your PR program is generating the ammo necessary for your social media channels so it's providing that third party accreditation via the media that that will help you to engage with your clients and prospective clients so it's absolutely fundamental I you know I, I, it, firms that want to jump into social media without having a good PR um, program in place they will run out of information, um, I think, quite quickly. And we see that quite a lot. So to keep the momentum, to keep the content, to keep that li- uh, almost that, that liquid feel of, of, of an account, of a social media account, it's really important to have coverage and to be generating really good news that's coming out of, the, of your content. So that's really important. I think in general, the way we try and structure a program for, for, for clients is it, it's looking at the things that you're what are you what are you, what is your growth plan what is it goes back to those kind of milestones so what are, where are you doing things positively where are you recruiting where are you partnering what products are you producing what services are you producing etc so it's really it's really blowing your own trumpet and i think in the uk we often have a bit of a problem with this but um but we're getting better um but i think it's really important for companies to do that um and i think that the journalists really like that because it allows them to create a timeline over over the years of of where they're going it provides a bit of context and that's that's very the other thing as well is using using your existing content so what are you doing on the marketing front what are you using for your clients that can be repurposed for media which can then communicate to an, a, a, a different um uh, range of, of of prospective clients as well so you're just making sure that you're you're, you're ticking all the boxes in terms of your content and where it's being used one of the the big areas that we have seen massive growth over the last few years and an area that works particularly well for smaller firms is is, the, is what we like to call news jacking and that's finding interesting pieces of news finding interesting pieces of data different interesting developments in your industry and jumping on them with short comments jumping on them quickly uh, and effectively using often using a pr firm like ours or 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 you can do it yourself but it it you really rely on good relationships with the media, which obviously a PR firm will provide and jumping onto these stories because invariably a lot of these stories and when this data is, comes out, journalists are doing exactly what a lot of these individual businesses are doing. They're having to write about it. And the one thing they want is comment. They want, they want comment as quickly as possible. So we do that very, very effectively with smaller firms who maybe don't have as much of their own news. So you're manufacturing news and, and interesting news hooks for your client that what it what that does over time is it it make it makes you or makes the firm it allows the firm to join the the dialogue with the with the bigger firms so and and, and you can see this by simply typing in the, the the client's name over time and you'll see on google from a search engine optimization that firm is appearing higher and higher up uh, it's and the level of 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 or the type of coverage it's receiving is a, is is in, is increasing that credit or, or raising that credibility bar. So it's a really effective way of joining a dialogue without having to say too much about yourself. So you don't have to necessarily come at come at it from a point of saying this is where we are, which which can as you know as 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 can happen, it can diminish your chances because your AUM might be a, lot, a lot lower than the rest of the industry. You might be one of the smaller players. So it allows you to join a conversation. So that's a really integral part of any program that we will always suggest. And then alongside that, you've got your your you mentioned it earlier your your classic your kind of. Um, you know, that the classical PR tactics of making sure you re- meet the right media, making sure you're on features, making sure you're are, are how, how are you with regards to awards? Are there any awards you should be entering? Are there any conferences you should be, you should be attending? So it's a really it's a really well balanced program of a mixture of owning your own news, 
um, attacking the the uh, to owning your own owning your own your own news and your own stories and your own growth, targeting external pieces of news where you can fit yourself into the dialogue and then it's your tactical side of features awards conferences so it's a nicely rounded um, campaign that we 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 set as a blueprint and um, invariably invariably we, we we often see clients that that you know really do grow uh, at a pace i'm not even sure or from a media perspective that i'm not sure i, I always think that clients are very surprised by the pace that it happens but because we just know it works and i think um you know as i say and it one of the great things is it the small firms are allowed to do this that journalists are not just going to the, the the classic firms the classic big firms as they did before they are very much more um you know open to suggestions from from a variety of different size firms so so you you touched on a few things there, Jamie. So I think we said, look, one of the things we need to be doing is, hey, look, and I didn't think, I'm not sure you said this, but, you know, media outlets, I, I guess, are looking for news, aren't they? Um, yes. And they're looking for, for in, in the commercial areas, they're looking for good news stories. So they're always looking for reliable sources to tap into. <clears throat> And bad and, news and stories I, as well, I must say. Well, sure, yeah. They're <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. For, for a bit of controversy. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And... And you said one of the things you can do is is newsjacking, which I which I quite liked. I thought, hang on, he's under something here, a bit of <laughs> disruption. And and yes. and piggyback on other people's stories where you provide commentary, industry insight, um, and that helps you become a voice or a spokesperson for the industry. If you yeah. become a known spokesperson, you become, you know, they'll come to you again and again and again and go, you know. What's his? What's her insight on 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 this story? What's what's the their perspective on this? They and and they're always looking for someone who can you know isn't camera shy and and can can share a story and and think on their feet and and come up with a response. So if you can do that, that's really helpful. That would then help you become. I think yeah, my 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 colleague Daniel Priestley um, would would call a key person of influence. You know, so you become the spokesperson, the voice of the industry, the go-to person because you're knowledgeable on all things for the industry, which is just going to raise your profile on awareness and 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 get you referenced more, and therefore appear on SEO. Um, <clears throat> have I captured the gist of it there? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That yeah, you really have, and I think um, it's really important. The 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 you, the, the newsjacking is is a fantastic tool, um, and I think when 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 we say piggybacking on the back of of other announcements, it's not companies. This is governmental. This is um, right. Think, for example, economic data, um, association or trade body uh, information on on the sector. It's it's independent data and announcements. So that you are not necessarily jumping on the on the bandwagon and raising the profile of of, of a potential competitor. It's independent organisations and, and association data that that and 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 as you can imagine, everyone's everyone's looking at that. Journalists are looking at that. Hence, why it's a great way of doing it. The other thing as well, which the reason why this works so well for smaller firms is because they don't necessarily have the levels of red tape that a bigger firm will have. You know, we we often find I've worked with bigger, big, much bigger firms. This strategy is quite it's quite difficult difficult for them because they they have obviously layers of of approval uh, there's regulation um, there, there's a lot of process that need to go th go through um, you know a lot of lot of hoops that need to be jumped through to get that piece out make it to make it external so you actually end up losing losing the the opportunity because you know one thing i've learned in the last few years uh and compared to when i started 14 years ago the pace of the media is frightening and the news agenda now is it used to be you know you'd think about a day of of what might happen in that in, in on the news agenda we're talking hours now i mean the news agenda is changing by the hour um so so the the speed at which uh, so a nimble a nimble a nimbler firm can do this and do this very effectively and that's why journalists like them because they know they'll get something quickly. Okay, so, brilliant. Okay, so thanks for for highlighting that. And I guess extending that further, you know, what you could do is not create but extract your own statistics and comment on them and and provide them. So yeah, I'm just um, you know thinking about industry <clears throat> statistics that aren't necessarily announced. But you can yep. go, well, this is, yeah, let's share this because something needs to be done about that. <clears throat> and I, I totally agree. And I think another another point on research, I would say, in data, and this is a this is something that that, that I, I, I do not see firms doing anywhere near enough of. 
it used to be years ago that you were, if you did some research, if you researched your client base, sorry, if you researched a, uh, a, a base of, of, of clients like your own or a base of, of investors, let's say, like your own, um, you would pay thousands of pounds and it would have to be an external research company. Now, that still has a place. They're still important. It's still, you know, it's great to, to do that. But gone are the days where journalists need that. Journalists are very, very happy now to to work with a story of, say, 100 of your clients. So we encourage our clients and I would encourage I would encourage businesses more and more to do this. Poll your clients. Ask your clients what are their views are. You know, you can offer a prize draw. You can offer whatever it needs to be, uh, vouchers to, to, to get the numbers. But if you can poll your own clients and ask them their views on the sector, gauge their sentiments. So what are they thinking of the next quarter? What are they thinking in in in, 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 in H2? What do they think that the, the sector is? What are their challenges? That is a story. So that's a story for, for a journalist. And the great thing is you then develop a press release, goes to media, uh, the, the journalists love that because they absolutely love data. Data, it, data is what you essentially can can create a story around. So data, are, it, data is essentially the bones, and then the meat can be the spokesperson or the the commentary. So I would really encourage uh, businesses and, and 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 your 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 listeners think about your clients and your client base and your database of, of, of are you doing a newsletter well great can you can you add a link that has a few questions in there that you can then create your own news hook so as to your point about owning your data that is such an effective way of doing it and and i think people often think oh well i've only got i've only got a thousand clients on this and i only get about 200 responding that's absolutely fine that's a great number you know so you don't need thousands of respondents you don't need a database okay. of thousands of people now <clears throat> interesting so Jamie, that really is an insight, actually. So so thanks for that. Like we we can really you know narrow the data the data down, and um, yeah, if you've got data, you turn it into a statistic, which becomes information, which becomes a story, um, and a story is based on data, even if it's a, a small sample size. What about the differences between um, B two C businesses and B two B businesses? You know, is there a difference in in how we approach things there? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I think, um, you know, with there's obviously, yeah, absolutely. There is a B2B, <clears throat> excuse me, a B2B uh, firm will have the, the, the type of, of coverage and the type of, I guess, um, available media outlets there are is, is smaller. Um, B2C firms will be able to come up with stories that maybe resonate a bit more with the read with the readers. So you'll often have a much bigger pool of potential media opportunities. Um, B B two B trades, for example, are in, inherently are obviously a lot. The pool of B two B trades that there are is obviously a lot smaller. Um, but I, I think in terms of, of of effective PR, I think what you'll find with B two B is it's a lot heavier on the messaging, a lot heavier on the strategy, and a lot heavier on what what exactly you are saying and what exactly you're communicating because you are it's in, in very inherently you are you are talking to another you are talking to other businesses i think from a b to c it's a bit it, it's obviously there's a lot more creativity there so a lot more creativity on your your angles your stories um data comes into it a lot more i don't think b2b firms use data anywhere near as well as they should from a pr perspective as b to c and but that to be honest that's probably a little bit obvious because they're you know they, they don't have a, 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 a sort of a client base of of consumers who you know who could be polled but yeah um so so there are differences for sure um and i would say that it, it, it there's a creativity difference at times um, and that's not because firms b2b firms are not creative it's just that it's a lot more heavier on the on the kind of the the corporate announcements the messaging the strategy than maybe b2c firms have okay so look, we've covered, you've shared a lot of fantastic ideas there, Jamie. So I'm I'm just thinking we we've got a, a an SME business owner out there. They might be a bit small. They they might be thinking they're not ready to engage and 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 get a PR agency. If they're ready, if they needed to do something themselves, just one thing that you think they should focus on to get started to start to raise the awareness of their brand, what would you suggest they do? I would say I would absolutely say that the most important thing is to have a look at your business. So really just have a think about what your business could provide uh, in terms of data, content, spokespeople that could work well externally. If you think that you have one of those three, two of those three or all three fantastic, then that is a great opportunity. It shouldn't be wasted. 
Um, I think don't be afraid of don't be afraid of 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 PR costs being astronomical because they simply aren't. There are firms out there that will do this for a very effective price. They will also do it from a, for a for a trial perspective as well so you can get a feel because that's really important um, at the same time if you feel confident that you could do it yourself um, you can absolutely do that it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily take a huge amount of effort um, to produce good quality content or to communicate the type of content or data that you already have because invariably you're probably already doing it with your marketing for, via your marketing to your, to your existing clients so it's just the, just making sure that you are utilizing every single piece that you have uh, and do not be afraid do not be afraid of the media um, the, the, the media are there to help you um, and I think if you can you can provide a human element to your corporate story you'll go a long, long way uh, and, and raise that credibility bar, which is absolutely essential. Yeah, they, we, we love a good story. We, we love a good feel good story about, you know, and with the human angle, don't we? So if we can absolutely. bring the human angle in there, yeah. um, the, the chances are the media will be all over it. <laughs> Yeah. And look, the, 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 you know, the old, I think, you know, if, if, if we had this conversation maybe four or five years ago, we'd probably be talking, yeah, but what about the negativity of the press? Aren't the press so negative? And yes, of course, a, 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 a negative story always sells better than a positive story. However, we have certainly seen a shift since COVID to, towards the business sector of media being far more receptive to good stories, far more, I would say, uh, open to good stories and good growth stories because I think we all needed I think I think the media really did respond to uh, COVID and how tough that was for a lot of businesses so good news stories are easier to sell in than they were in previous years okay well that's interesting and 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 great to know and uh yeah from a personal factor I I, I like the fact that we're you know we're starting to think a bit more about positive and, and good news stories absolutely okay absolutely. so Jamie look I'm just thinking this through. We've got um, uh, so many angles and areas that, that someone could focus on. We we acknowledge that our brand is is an intangible asset, um, and and it can be a, a significant value asset when it comes to exiting our business. And and yeah, even though it doesn't appear on the balance sheet, it is there. And if if strategically worked, can create significant asset value even for a smaller business. <laughs> Um, we've gone, it doesn't happen by chance. We, we need to get on the front foot in, in getting the messaging out and getting clever with the stories that we pull together and, and pitch um, and present to media outlets if we want them to reshare the story for us. Um, we, we want to grab data um, and information that's out there that's publicly shared and provide opinion on this uh, because that creates a good angle. We've got to continue with our own um, social media and and have a, a a content plan around that we could use yep. some help with that so that we don't run out of ideas so that we get a pattern and a theme going you've covered a whole lot but but business owners we, we've already already got a lot on our plate we've we've got a number of things we're going through we've got a you know there's always so much we've got to work on as a business owner if if you were to suggest that there's one thing one key message that you want business owners to take away from our conversation today um one nugget of advice what would you you want them to to take uh, away uh, uh I think everything you've just said there is absolutely on the money and exactly um you know condensed really nicely one thing i would say, say don't leave it too late don't leave it too late because what you don't want to happen is you say you're on a five-year journey and you go oh we don't need pr or we can't afford pr and year five comes along and you think right okay we're we're in a good we're in a good position we think we're ready for that five year we're, we're on target we're ready for we're ready for for, for, for to, to, to be purchased now and to, to we're looking for a buyer at that point you're already too late if you're starting PR because you haven't created the dialogue. You haven't laid the groundwork. You don't know the journalists. You haven't communicated what you do particularly well. You probably haven't owned a section of the media via good data. Um, and, and you probably haven't inserted your brand into dialogues with bigger brands so that when it comes to a negotiation table, you might you might get get, you know, get some interested buyers that think you appear bigger than you are. And that point we made earlier. So I think one thing I would say is, if you think there is an element, if you think that you have a five-year plan and you think you are, you can get there, get 
get your PR and get your communications sorted early. Start to lay the groundwork early because PR is not something you can click your fingers and it happens. Um, it's something that does take a lot of groundwork, a lot of a lot of laying laying the foundations so that you have the credibility. You've laid the foundations so that you have the credibility to talk to media and then media will take you seriously. It's a classic old phrase of PR. You know, talk to, uh, you, you know if you, if you if you can talk to me or talk about the market, the market will talk about you, and that's what we fundamentally believe. But that does not happen overnight, so do not leave it too late. Which is what I would say. Don't leave it too late. Thanks, Jamie. There's some great insights there for business owners to take away to help build the value of their business. It's not going to happen overnight, but get started early um, and don't leave it too late. Thanks for your time today. No worries. Thank you very much. 